This is Oberlin College in Oberlin, Ohio, the veritable heart of middle America. Oberlin College, in educational terms, is one of the most highly regarded institutions in the nation, with its division of arts and sciences and its nationally renowned conservatory of music. But there is nothing traditional or conservative about Oberlin College, because you see in its history are lodged two essential facts. It was the first co-educational institution in this country and the first white institution to admit black students. Now, something new is happening at Oberlin College, this time in the world of athletics. It has a brand new program, which is headed up by a man who has called himself a populist radical and has written a book called The Athletic Revolution. His name is Jack Scott. He is hired as his assistant athletic director, a former black athlete who is regarded widely as a black militant. And the latest thing to have happened is that with the student athletes participating, the members of the football team, they have selected a black head coach over a predominantly white football team. So we are here at Oberlin to get their side of what they are doing and you can judge it for yourself. We're in the Jesse Phillips Field House, still only one year old and really a magnificently appointed place, with the still new director of athletics here at Oberlin, his name Jack Scott, maybe you've heard of him. What's been the reaction of the white students here, because this is a predominantly white college, to the hiring of Cass Jackson? That has been one of the most encouraging reactions to me because the team was involved in this decision. It wouldn't have been appropriate, I don't believe, for some administrator to decide to make a decision like this by himself. And the most heartwarming part of this job for me has been to see the team be able to select the person who in everyone's eyes was the most highly qualified person regardless of, of what his race was. Did you deliberately set out to hire a black head football coach? My concern is to build a successful football program at Oberlin College. What I wanted to do was get the finest coach that we could get for Oberlin College. Now, knowing the history of American athletics and how blacks have been excluded from head coaching positions throughout the country, I suspected by encouraging black applicants, we might get some very highly qualified people to apply who otherwise might not have. We were successful in doing that, but once we got down to making a decision, when we worked with the team, we worked with the faculty of the physical education department, administration of the college, and hiring someone. Our concern was to get the person who will bring a successful football program to Oberlin College. Finally, you want a winning football team. You never agreed with the maxim that winning is everything, but it still does matter. It certainly beats losing. <laughs> the president of Oberlin College is Mr. Robert Fuller. He was appointed at the age of 33, he is 36 now, and reflects the general contemporary atmosphere of this school. And Bob, President Nixon has expressed an open concern over permissiveness in the current society. Many people agree with him. Isn't your act in allowing the students to select a black head coach an evidence of such permissiveness? First of all, the students didn't select the coach. They participated in the selection with many others, and the final appointment was made by the college, as with all other appointments. I think Mr. Nixon's concern confuses permissiveness with giving students permission to exercise greater responsibility. And we're training students here to be responsible citizens. How can they become responsible citizens if they don't exercise responsibility in the course of their education. So you're satisfied that there has been no grand largesse given to your students that would usurp the authority of the institution? I like to think of it as shared responsibility and shared authority. This is the very room where Chris White, sitting here with me, co-captain of the Oberlin College football team with some of his cone frayers, interviewed Cass Jackson and ultimately decided that Cass would get the job as head coach. Chris, this is a highly liberal institution. Everybody knows that. You young people are, most of you, of the same vein. Were you then out deliberately to choose a black coach? Uh, not really. We did interview white coaches, uh, several of them, very qualified. Uh, Cass Jackson is the man impressed us. Uh, 
with his attitude about the game and the way he could work his program around us, we thought he'd fit in very well with what we were trying to do. What questions did you ask him, Chris? Basically, we just asked him about his football technique, uh, his philosophy of the game, and uh, we were also pleased with uh, his acceptance of the thought that uh, we had to study here at Oberlin, and that takes up quite a bit of our time, and we were pleased that he was able to work his program very well around the restrictions that were placed upon us as students here. Mm -hmm. What about submission to authority? Did you feel that you would submit to his authority? You were hiring him. Oh, very much, very much so. He was, uh, as I said, confident, and uh, his authority, I don't think, was ever questioned. He seemed uh, very able to communicate with us. We talked with him very freely, and uh, his authority would never be questioned. His credentials were very outstanding. Oberlin College has not had a winning football team for the past nine seasons. They play in a place where the seats are very, very few and where no admission price is even charged. How do you translate the past nine years into a winning season? That'll be the task of the new head coach. Cass, what was your reaction when you learned that you were applying for a job where you would be interviewed by the students, not by management, in effect? Well, as you know, Howard, management is so conservative and so afraid to stretch out and take a chance to do something different. Students, let's face it, in our society now, the students are the ones who are making a forefront in all progressive movements. How many black kids on the squad? Uh, there's about five, I would say. How many are white? There's about 16 on the squad. Do you think that uh, a black man like you could coach at a major, predominantly white football institution? I think that a black man like myself, a black man like any of the other black men who are coaching in America, are all capable of coaching at a predominantly major white institution. I'm, I'm saying that black men are qualified to be coaches. I think it's time that people understood that. Uh, you know, a few years ago, they couldn't play baseball. <laughs> Oberlin College has as its new assistant director of athletics a young man who was really big time. You'll remember him as the 200-meter gold medal winner at Mexico City in the 19th Olympiad. And, of course, you remember Tommy Smith for something else. You ran in big-time college track and field. You were a superb athlete, world record holder. Would this Oberlin system work in big-time college sports, in your opinion? I think it would. I, I think the students, I think the athletes, I think they're intelligent enough to take on uh, uh, loads of such. I think they should be included in certain things. I think the college is there to serve the student and to serve the athlete instead of uh, uh, the, the, the athlete or the student serving the uh, ser uh, a particular institution. And I think it can work, only given a chance. Do you think you've changed since 68? Have you grown less militant? Uh, uh, what does militant mean? Don't spar with me. We're not going back to 68, Tommy. Militant peace, means a peace, guy peace, who speaks peace. out in protest, whether by physical symbol or vocally, with a truculence attached to his tone of voice, against the existing establishment and its procedures. Now, with that premise, have you changed? I'm a militant. Well, in Tommy's sense of, Tommy Smith's sense of using the word militant, I'm a militant too. We're going to struggle very militantly to bring about the kind of changes that we believe in. And so here at Oberlin, you've met the people, gained an insight into the whys and wherefores of their athletic program. I don't know if it's going to work, but I don't know why it shouldn't, because the essence of this program is lodged in the basics of the American democracy, the Constitution, and what this country is supposed to be all about. It's been a lot of years. 26 years, for instance, since Jackie Robinson came into the big leagues, and still no major league black manager. Still no black head coach in the National Football League. Still no black head coach at a major sports college or university. It's enough to make one wonder. Why couldn't Eddie Robinson, the head coach at Grambling, for instance, produce the same kind of great players that he's produced at Grambling? 
for the Big Eight, the Big Ten, or the Pacific Eight. Questions that I think we as citizens have to wrestle with if we really believe in what we say our country is. So here at Oberlin, I wish them luck because they're trying something. And if they can make it work, they will prove something very important to a lot of people who for a lot of years have used the flimsy excuse, we've yet to find one who's qualified. From Oberlin College in the heart of middle America, this is Howard Cosell reporting.